Welcome to Knights of the Apocalypse, a Rogue Tech Let's Play. Welcome back. And after our last mission, we've just got to make some decisions here as to what to do next. We could wait for everything to get repaired and have our um, mech warriors complete their um, their time to get rid of their fatigue. However, you'll see that there's a, um, a mission called the B-Team for Word of Blake. And this mission will enable us to just take one of our mech warriors along and we can use that single mech warrior along with these. It's only a half star mission, so not a bad way to cash in while we're waiting for the repairs to be done to some of the other mechs and for our mech warriors to lose their fatigue. Also in the engineering section, we are ready to do our next upgrade. Now options here are you could jump into structures and either get this storage space one, which reduces our overall cost for carrying items, which is kind of good. But I'm going to start moving along the recreation tiers uh, because that gets our morale up and increases our tech points and medical points. So we'll start off by building a lounge. Sure thing. It'll take a bit, but we'll get it done. So for this contract, uh, the optimal is to go for two items of selected loot and eight overall and 341,000 of payment, so we'll do that. And you'll see we've got the B team here. Uh, we will put beef into the crab, which is our biggest and hardiest mech, which is what we'll definitely need for this. We do have the harasser uh, missile platform available, um, but we don't have a pilot available, so I think we can live without the <laughs> missile harasser platform, and we'll just do this half skull mission with the crab. So here we are ready to deploy and it looks like we've got some assistance which will be helpful because the Hermes and the Locusts that are part of our training team are not very uh, sturdy. The base we have to get to is all the way over here or to look at is all the way over here. I don't see any turrets so we'll try and get ourselves as close as possible. This flat spot uh, on this side isn't too bad. Um, and we should be able to make our way up this side and if we need to there's cover about the place Just going to redeploy these again because you've got to be careful you don't end up on some janky rock and then you guys can't move Plenty of tree cover here Let's use it It's interesting, we've got a an eternally running hunchback. It's really weird. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is try and move up, use these trees. So in one of the previous comments, I was asked, you know, to, to be a bit more clear with the tactics. So I'll try and do that now. So when you're coming up these sides here, um, anyone who's got jump jets, it's really uh, helpful um, to be able to just kind of come up in these uh, next to steep cliffs like this and then try and jump up um, to maintain both a lot of evasion and just keeps you out of range. Look, the, the trick really is you want to engage at the front with whatever your heaviest mech is. So in this case hey, the crab would be really handy uh, to whatever you end up facing and then try and flank around with at least one or two. Once you get long range um, sort of missile boats and long range fire support then that's a good time to um, sort of split it up so that you, then you've got one front line, some longer range snipers, and then you've got your flankers as well. So in this case, the, the locust would, would be the flanker, the crab is the front, front line, and then yep. the Hermes will yep. either act as the front line or as a, uh, a flanker depending on uh, the situation. So we'll try and get close to this base and scout this base and see, we, see where we get to. Affirmative, Commander. Beef in the crab and the two rookies in the homies move up under the ledge and fire at the sniper turret from close range. Now it's the second of the homies scoring the killing blow. Hey, 
Halfway through the third round, we've managed to move up and get under this ledge and take out the first turret that we found here under the tree, which was a sniper turret, so it was pretty ineffective once we got up close. Now if we look at what we've got left, we've got a shredder turret, so I'm assuming that's going to be short range missiles, so we do, we need to take 260 hit points worth of damage out of it, uh, which is basically the entire squad firing for at least a turn and everything hitting, so that might be a bit difficult. And there's another turret around the other side here, a long range missile turret, um, which my allies over here are starting to shoot at. So I'll leave that to them and we will try and carefully move our way up here. If we're lucky we might be able to use some of this cover to minimize any damage. Uh, but I'm sure there's a fourth turret around the back here somewhere so we want to make sure that we uh, don't end up as much as possible in view of both turrets at one time. So similarly with this turret we want to make sure that when we're here we're behind this building so we're not in front of the two turrets at one time. So that might take a couple of rounds to get ourselves around here so we can just shoot at this turret at relatively close range. And we'll see how we go. I'm going. The lance moves round to the right and up the slope in an attempt to capture the base. Roger, Skipper. Taking it. but are interrupted when reinforcements arrive. We've started to move around uh, on this lower shelf area to try and get a good angle on this light shredder turret, but unfortunately at the end of round three we've had some drop pods come in and we're looking at a locust, two locusts, a line holder, and a spider, so all light mechs except for the line holder. Uh, but we don't want to kind of mix too much with all of those together, so we'll still try and take out this light shredder turret if we can, and then we'll have to see where these mechs have moved to and decide which ones to start trying to pick off or if we go for the remainder of the turrets. The Allied Lance continues to provide long range fire support. The Lance continues to move in, trying to use the buildings as cover to take out the short-range missile turret. However, the line holder appears from behind a building and tears off one of the Hermes arms. I'm losing weapons. The enemy locust also makes an appearance. With concentrated fire and some long range support from the allies, the turret finally goes down. So what we've managed to do now is we did get around and destroy this turret with uh, the final shot being from the supporting allies. However, um, unfortunately, Guano's uh, Hermes has had an arm taken off which has turned him in literally to a tag bot. So uh, his job now really is to be bait for everyone else. Um, you'll notice that I've put the locust and the crab, so beef in the crab, uh, just around behind this building uh, because this uh, line holder is the the real threat with his um, various energy and missile weapons if he, he gets accurate shots off he'll chew up the uh, the locust and the Hermes quite quickly uh, all right so from here I'm gonna start backing the lance away use this building as cover and we'll finish off this spider first if we can uh, and we'll see uh, we'll probably take on the light mechs unless the line holder really shows itself. So let's see how we go about that. Let's go. Using the terrain and getting further down the hill, the two Hermes and the Locust are able to get behind the spider, destroying it. Target in 
The enemy locust uses the high ground to get some good shots off though. Fortunately this locust, enemy locust has become isolated over this side and the line holder instead of moving through here where he was potentially going to get flanked has moved across um, into the center of the capture zone. So we're in a reasonably good position just to isolate and kill off this locust having already killed off the spider and then hopefully the supporting fire will just continue from our allies uh, to keep these other two busy so we'll try and uh, get rid of the locust first and then we'll see which one's closest and easiest to access from the others remembering there is a turret around here still somewhere onward One of the rookies, Stubble, in the Hermes, unsuccessfully tries for a melee attack. However, this enables Beef in the Crab to knock over the Locust. which then becomes a target for everybody. Firing all weapons. The lands continue to move around to the right to get a good angle on the line holder. We're trying very hard to flank this line holder. Uh, <laughs> we've managed to knock down hard uh, the left torso, which is where a lot of the uh, weapons are mounted. However, we haven't managed to break through it. Fortunately, it's starting to overheat, and its last salvo didn't really do an enormous amount of damage other than, um, you know, onto just one arm of the locust. So we'll continue trying to chip away at this side of him. And we'll completely ignore uh, this locust and we'll try and keep the Hermes with its tag just kind of running around uh, to provide target practice for these guys, hopefully missing. Locked on target. The line holder is tagged and then flanked by the smaller mechs of the Lance. Taking some shots in the rear. The return fire is quite inaccurate. Beef in the crab moves in, makes a successful melee attack and does some serious damage. With a little additional damage from the allies from long range. So we've just about knocked over the line holder, uh, seriously damaging that left side and tearing off the torso and arm. I tried to go in for a killing blow with crab and did a lot of damage, however I've really overheated that mech heavily. Uh, so now what we will try and do is uh, continue to outflank and use the weak side. He's unsteady and see if we can finish him off and then we can focus on the locust. The line holder takes one final shot in the rear and comes down. Target down. The 
The remaining enemy locust in trying to avoid direct fire from the nearby lance exposes its rear to the long range fire of the allies. A successful mission, so we didn't get the bonus for completely destroying all the turrets, however uh, there is one bonus for this mission for destroying the enemy reinforcements, which we did. So 355,000, which is fine at this early stage. Uh, the best bit about these missions is it doesn't really matter what damage is done to any of the rookies and the trainees, so even though we don't get experience for our own pilots, Beef got some experience and very minimal damage on the crab, so that'll be quick to repair, so we've saved ourselves quite a bit of time. Um, it's a shame that cr uh, Beef didn't get more kills because that gives you a slight bonus to your experience, but that's fine. And just thinking about salvage here, uh, depending on where we're going to go with our builds for our new mechs or further mechs, uh, is, decides what we'll pick up here. Um, so I'll just go through and see what is going to be best here. So look, there really isn't much worth getting here. I've gone and gotten a line holder because we really want to get a 55 ton mech or a few 55 ton mechs. Line holder is not a great mech to start with. However, um, for its weight class, it does have quite a lot of armor. And if you can put XL engines and endo steel on it, uh, you get still quite a lot of slots to use um, in terms of lasers or sorry, energy weapons or missile armaments. And you've got one whopping great spot for a ballistic weapon um, so you can turn this into quite a good mech so I will collect one piece of line holder and then a medium pulse laser now these are great for fly swatting smaller mechs later on so getting a few pulse lasers available so you can get a mech that's good at getting rid of either helicopters or anything that's got lots of pips of evasion uh, this is really handy for so we'll, we'll grab that um, there's just no XL engines, there's no endo steel. I could have grabbed the PPC because it's quite a valuable weapon and uh, it's good for, it's multi-purpose, long range, clears mines, causes sensor jamming, does run hot, but um, they are still pretty good weapon. So that would have been maybe the other option, but everything else is extremely vanilla. Uh, so what we will do as we go through here is we will sell the sensors basic straight away because they're useless to us really. Uh, there's better sensors out there at any point really. And then we'll decide whether we sell the jump jets later. SRM6 is all right and that's good. So we'll go, we've got Amiga 540 C bills in one day to repair the crap. So that's great. Next time when we come back, we may continue with another one of these missions here or it might be time to look further afield. That brings us to the end of another episode of The Knights of the Apocalypse, a Rogue Tech Let's Play. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.